All right, let's get to the let's get to the meat and potatoes. So at the start of the show, I said I woke up at seven thirty a.m. local time. Seven fucking thirty a.m. Do you know when I used to do the kill stream? It would come on at like eleven p.m. Eastern when it first took off, and I might not wake up. I was kind of on that Fuentes schedule back then. I ain't gonna lie. I would stay up until three or four or whenever the show was over, then stay up an hour or two after the show. Sometimes go to bed when the sun was coming out, wake up about five or six, <laughs> four at the earliest after in the afternoon. And, you know, fuck around and figure out what I was going to do on the show sometimes. And sometimes it just happened. Well, now I, you know, even though I'm a streamer and I talked about those unique uh, job traits earlier, I get up like a normal person person in the morning and have been uh, for several months. And it's, it's, a definite, it's a definite switch. So I was up even an hour earlier than normal lately. And I checked my DMs. Let me check them again. I won't say who sent it to me, but. Oh, sick. And we got the Eric July stream. Boost! Shout out to Young Clipper. Not Young Ripper. Fuck him. Shout out to Young Clipper, because I just saw the message, and I'll check that in a second. But I got this message along with some images, and it said, Andrew Anglin has turned on Nick Fuentes. And I said, no way. And I just woke up like 10 or 15 minutes earlier. I'm seeing it now. It was 8.57 Eastern, 7.57 a.m. Normally, I'm sleeping at that time. Not for much longer, but for a few minutes longer. I said, no way. Then they sent these images and it took me, I'm still waking up. So I'm like, all right, give me a second. I got to read through these. It's going to take me a second. I'm still like focusing and trying to, okay. All right. Is it work time already? I've only been up 10 fucking minutes. I'm still, I was still laying in bed. And so I'm like, okay, all right. Let me snap out of it. All right. All right. All right. Let me read this. <clears throat> Let me read this. And. So I did read it, and I'm about to read it to you all. Now, you can decide whether this is a, is a full turn or not. And I saw somebody on Twitter said, oh, they'll probably talk it out. I think it was a gripper. And I was like, yeah, they, maybe they will. Probably they will. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe is the better word. But I don't know because it is a pretty scathing. It is a pretty scathing critique of Nick Fuentes. Now, what precipitated this critique? Now, I didn't see, I didn't see Nick's program last night, and I almost never do, because I'm, I, I stream all day. It's not even because we had a falling out, like I just come to doing something or going to sleep, like I, just, I have to have some time to myself after an eight hour fucking stream, and so I didn't see it, and I don't even think he's been streaming that much lately. Let me see if I have the video. So what precipitated this before I read this out, which it is hilarious, I have to say. Uh, let's see if this will play. Wednesday, I'll be doing a stream with Richard Spencer. What? Which is going to be interesting. Because, you know, I haven't talked to Richard either, in a Coco long Bears. time. I, I think we did a Twitter space maybe last year. Earlier this year, I'm not exactly sure when that. Yeah, they did. And I covered it on the kill stream back when I was on Cozy. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering that too, Coco Bears. He says, I don't think Nick will allow himself to be humiliated, humiliated like this. His ego is too massive. Well, that's my, that was my first inclination, but you know, I don't know. It's a pretty important ally. Then he says, although it is coming from his e daddy, so it might hurt a bit more seeing him snake. Yeah, I guarantee you it hurt. And knowing what I know about. Nick, you know, my first instinct is he won't accept that because we've seen him throw people out for a lot less than what I'm about to read to you. But again, I uh, couldn't say for sure. It happened, but it was very brief. Uh, but I really haven't talked to Richard on a stream in like maybe five years. It's been a really long time. And obviously so much has transpired since then. And he's gone in a totally different direction. And so many things have happened with me. Uh, so he reached out to me last week and said he, he's doing this series. He wants me to come on his show and, uh, 
And I said, yeah, man, like, I think it'll be a great conversation. So I think it'll be a really interesting retrospective. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a lot about kind of our history and everything that has happened. And uh, we'll also talk about where we are now. And I, I don't agree with Richard on a lot of things, but I have to say he's really funny. And I also think that he's, uh, he's a real character. And I do think he's very intelligent. I never agreed with people always used to say that he was dumb. I was, of course, very critical of him. Well, who would say? I mean, that's not unfair. Critique. <laughs> you could have some fair critiques. Uh, that's not one of them. But When I started out, uh, and a lot of people said he was dumb. I never said he was dumb. I disagreed with a lot of things that he did, but I always thought he was a very intelligent person. So, um, so it's going to be a good conversation. I, I don't know... Um, if it's going to be, if it's going to be public and live on Wednesday, I have to get the details, but we'll be recording it Wednesday. I think it might be live for everybody on Wednesday. I'm not exactly sure, but wait, wait, wait. let's go back and hear that again. It's going to be a good conversation. I, I don't know, um, if it's going to be, if, if it's going to be public and live on Wednesday, I have to get the details, but we'll be recording. Are you fucking serious? You little fucker. Why are you announcing it if you don't even know? Okay. Whatever. Recording it Wednesday. I think it might be live for everybody on Wednesday. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll be doing that Wednesday. It, Wednesday, All right. I'll All right. be doing And so the Groypers were celebrating. They were celebrating this, and I saw... Can I find this? Let me see. There was this one comment. I'm sure... I'm sure Mr. Anglin loved this comment, by the way. Let me see if I can find out. I want to find this tweet and pull it up because it jumped out to me. This is hilarious. Okay, let me pull this tweet up. The Del Groip uh, weirdo who posts all the Fuente stuff. And I actually didn't have any problems with him uh, before, but then I found out Snowflake Gang, some other stuff, but whatever. After I left. <laughs> Okay, but this person says, let's go hyped for all this content. Spencer collab will be good. Always so wholesome to see them talk. Well, not always. You ever heard that recording where Spencer's starting to kill him or whatever, but whatever. The two people on the dissident right, listen to this. The two people on the dissident right who are actually intelligent. The only two? Well, that's not true. That's actually a retarded statement. The only two people who are intelligent on the dissident right? And I'm not even sure if you would classify Spencer on the dissident right anymore. The only two intelligent people on the dissident right. Well, we just had Curtis Yarvin on last night. I'd say he's pretty fucking intelligent. I'd definitely say he's on the dissident right. And there's a million other names you could think of. Even on their own site. I had a falling out with Keith Woods, but I'd say he's fairly intelligent. I can think of many more. Like I said, I won't even start naming them because anybody can think of some. The two people on the distant right who are actually intelligent and have interesting op opinions, every everybody else, everybody else is mid slash yo low IQ normie. Everyone else. And both have great sense of humor. The only two intelligent people this is right. Okay. Now, what did Anglin have to say about this? What did he have to say about this? Hmm. Well, he did have something to say about it. And it's contained in these screens. God, they're small, aren't they? Again, I didn't take these, but I think somebody took them off their phone. I'll have to increase the... Great idea, Mr. Anglin says. Getting involved with Richard Spencer is known to have really good outcomes, is what he said. Well, let me open the. I have to open these separately. And uh, I guess somebody critiqued him. Is that Kozer? What did he say? What did Kozer even say originally? Let me see if I can find that. Because he's responding to something Kozer says. Let's see if I can find it. 
Um, let's see. I'm trying to see what the what he's responding to. Okay, okay. There's the great idea post. And then Kozer said, getting involved is a bit of a stretch. I think they are just going to do an introspection on 2016, 2017, maybe lessons learned and going over old feuds. Richard is not going to become a groper, nor are we going to become Apollonian or whatever. It could be good content. At the same time, I understand the concerns, even, even appearing to be on side with Richard Spencer can cause unnecessary confusion and unintended blow black, blow black, blow back. I was thinking the commentary community there. There is a reason we don't intersect with Dr. Duke, despite having lots of overlap. Nick is no doubt. Are they saying David Duke is more poisonous than Nick? Whatever. I don't know. As usual, I trust the man's judgment. Okay. Well, what does Anglin think? This is pretty sour, I have to say. <laughs> I only read it once this morning, but it has some sting in it. I have to, I have to say, not sour as in he's sour, but it has to be sour to read. If you're Nick Fuentes, I guarantee he's already read it four or five times. He said, "Yes, you're right. Nick is a <laughs> go ahead, no problem." Anonymous sent five dollars Spencer and Snoopy <laughs> for keynote speakers at a pack. You know, I, I'm sure we'll cover that live, uh, and we'll do a commentary live. I've been at a couple of packs myself. I don't know who he's gonna dra uh, drag out there, but he says yes, and thank you for that five bucks. Yes, you're right. Nick is a messianic figure who can turn federal informants into useful figures in the right wing. It doesn't matter how completely irrelevant the figure is or how compromised he is, as long as he says nice things about Nick. Nick, wait, as long as he says nice things about Nick, Nick can lend his relevance to the Fed and make him into a very useful person. It doesn't even matter if no one knows who the person is beyond media spectacle condemning him as a neo-Nazi and a homosexual. There's more. But wait, there's more. The cool thing... <laughs> Wow, this does sound cool. Let me try to resize it. The cool thing about being a serious genius. Oof. Fuck. The cool thing about being a serious genius is that Nick doesn't need advice from anyone because he has magic powers and is ordained by God to really make very good decisions. And anyone who disagrees with him is a shill or maybe evil. We know how effective Nick is... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we know how effective Nick is with public relations because of his long history of really getting along <laughs> of really getting along well with others. He never this is not I don't know, man. I'm rereading this and I don't see how I don't if, if Fuentes makes nice after this, it's gonna be a big surprise. Anonymous sent three dollars only Anglin can commit to a dozen paragraphs of pure sarcasm. <laughs> Nick has been big dogged here. Will he submit? He has been big dogged. He has definitely been big dogged. And I saw a couple of gripers, and I haven't even been going at the gripers or Nick much recently because I said this uh, a few weeks ago. It's like, look, the Gaza thing's going on, all hands on deck, as far as I'm concerned, uh, against Zionists, uh, to be honest. That being said, um, it's kind of something I've been waiting on, and I did say, if it's noteworthy, I'll be there. Uh, and it doesn't get much more noteworthy than this when it comes to uh, America First and Fuentes and Angle and all that. So that's why we're here. And I saw a couple of gripers um, in my replies, and they're like, oh, this, oh, this is all sarcasm, and what about oh, sarcasm? is terrible. First off, sarcasm is amazing. Sarcasm is one of the best things on earth. I love sarcasm. I love sarcastic comments, as you may be able to tell. <laughs> I absolutely love them. I love sarcastic writing. It is one of my favorite things on earth. And so that's what I would call a cope. And if you don't like sarcasm, you're probably a faggot. I don't know what to say. Like, I, I really enjoy sarcasm. So my thoughts on that. But okay, let's pick back up. 
We all know how effective Nick is with public relations because of his long history of really getting along well with others. He never creates lunatic, bizarre debacles. Never takes completely irrelevant figures. TC fan sent $5. You can Saw tell you Anglin Twitter. has been yeah. waiting to get this off his chest for a while. That's what it feels like to me, and thank you for that. And I saw you on Twitter, um, you know, Kina Gay. I posted this first. Of course, he stole it from me, like everything good that he's ever posted came from me. And he tried to act like it was his. 15 minutes later, of course, my tweet blew him out of the water. And I saw TC fan saying that you're washed. You're washed. And the Ralph Amell scooped you. Yes, both of those things are true. And thank you for that. And I saw a lot of people, and I'm not going to skip uh, too much time here before I get back to the reading, but I saw... Uh, a lot of people agitating for for the OG mystery guest, uh, we'll say, uh, to make a return to the kill stream. I don't know uh, if that'll happen. <clears throat> I would like to see it happen. Even if it wasn't about this, uh, I would like to have the OG mystery guest back on just to talk to him. And I never denounce him. I did have a couple problems. I don't think he should have said what he said on my show. And, you know, I did criticize him for standing by Fuentes. And, but I was very careful not to uh, make it personal and not to uh, run him down or um, even really attack him because um, he'd been a longtime friend of mine and I didn't feel I didn't feel comfortable doing that uh, because uh, he stood by me during a lot of difficult times in my life and one of the few people that I talked to about almost everything in my life and I haven't talked to him since July, but um, was a really good friend of mine. And I won't tell everything there, but every little detail, but I uh, talked to him a lot when my mom was dying and um, about everything in my life. When I say everything, that's what I, that's what I mean. And I don't talk to many people like that online because I don't trust that many people for good reason. <laughs> and to his uh, eternal credit, uh, he never put anything out there or, you know, try to go at me or here's what I know about Ralph and his toughest moments or anything like that. It never happened. Uh, and so I, I do appreciate that. Is he talking about baked? I'm talking about the OG mystery. I'm talking about angling. What the fuck? Okay. Like, do you want me to? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not talking about baked. Although I have nothing bad to say about baked. Uh, no, I was talking about, I was talking about angling. Uh, and I, I do appreciate that. And again, I would like to have him back on, but um, again, I, I don't know if that'll if that'll materialize. But uh, and even if it, even if he did say he would come back, uh, we don't have to talk about this if he didn't want to. Of course, we could. <laughs> I won't stop him, but uh, I'd just like to talk to him again, actually. But uh, shut up, Francois. Are you trying to tell me shit? Have you ever even seen the kill stream? Do you even know? You don't even know what I'm talking about. Who the fuck are you talking to? You better stay clear of me. The fuck are you? Francois? You trying to tell me how to run this show? <laughs> you trying to give me orders from the chat? The fuck? Who is this guy? Who is this guy, Cinemaz? <laughs> what? Francois is a black Britney simp. What is this guy's problem? I better steer clear of you. Motherfucker. Tell me how to run this show. The OG Mr. Guest was on here five years ago. Over five years ago. And it's been on 40 fucking times. I don't even know. A bunch of times. I don't know what happened to Mama JF. Did they find her floating in a fucking ditch or some shit? Like, I, where is that coming from? <clears throat> anyway, he's a Britney orbiter, some bald black gay dude. What in the fuck is even going on? I'm sorry that I even started that up. This is a complete detour. Anyway, <clears throat> who is that guy? Go back to politically hovoked. Hovoked. The fuck are you talking to? That dumb bitch may allow some shit like that. Don't tell me shit, Francois. I tell you, you don't tell me. Motherfucker. 
No, don't take his coat. He ain't saying shit now, though, I notice. His coat hasn't been taken, and he still hasn't said shit. Why don't you fucking talk, Francois? Where did you go? Where did you fucking go? Why don't you say something else? Fucker. What, are you scared now? You had a big mouth a few minutes ago. Okay, well, give us some more. <laughs> I'm slightly fucking with Francois, by the way. I don't hate Francois. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Merry Christmas, motherfucker. All right, let me give. <laughs> Talk about a detour. I don't even know what the fuck. Mama JF made an appearance somehow. Whatever. Anyway, we'll see if he comes back. Maybe he turned it off after I started going at him. You ought to be thankful. That's a blessing. That's a gold star when I razz you out in chat. That's a mark of privilege. Anyway. The cool thing about being a serious genius is that Nick doesn't need advice from anyone because he has magic powers and is ordained by God to make really, to really make very good decisions. And anyone who disagrees with him is a shill or maybe evil. We know how effective Nick is with public relations because of his long history of really getting along well with others. He never creates lunatic, lunatic, Bizarre debacles. Never takes completely irrelevant figures and turns them into the center of his political movement. It's amazing the way he is able to judge people's character and extra fantastic the way he doesn't ever get all emotional. Ooh. All emotional about some irrelevant freak he tried to be friends with and then spend months talking about him for no reason. Ooh. A Jaden McNeil appearance. Oh, oh, ow, 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 no, oh, that would hurt me, oh, no, oh, he got all emotional, why did he get emotional, Andrew, what's the real story there? Some people, Perspicacity, our resident homosexual, our senior homosexual analyst here on the kill stream, has long speculated. And again, speculation. But he has long speculated that Fuentes and Jaden had an actual homosexual relationship. Just by the way they act. And again, I have no direct knowledge of that. It might not be true. But he is our senior homosexual analyst. Uh, analyst. And he's long said that. And I remember disagreeing with him on air. And he's like, no, I've seen this. No, I've seen this. So again, couldn't say, but that's his opinion. We have the chief of staff title taken. What's Perspic's official title? Senior homosexual? No, it's co-host, actually. It's his first title. He's not just a co-host, but he's also the senior homosexual analyst. Why are you saying analysis? Analyst. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> then Anglin continues. I've never seen anyone, anyone in my life so good at judging people's character and then making really good decisions when it turned out he totally misjudged a person's character. Anyone who questions him is an enemy, and it picks up. And it has more. Anyone who questions him is an enemy. Wait, wait, wait. Where is this? Because it's kind of cut. Okay. Sorry. Anyone who questions him is an enemy because everything he does is right because he does it. Reality bends around him. And every time there's a crisis that seems to have been caused by him, it's actually caused by other people somehow. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. How are they going to make peace after that? Maybe they do. Again. 
But I'm rereading this now, and I'm just like, fuck. Fuck. This is devastating. This is all very reasonable. And these are totally very good qualities of a leader. He has leadership qualities stacked on leadership qualities. He's like a Jenga tower. Excuse me. Like a Jenga tower of very good leadership qualities. I've never seen someone so humble and willing to engage in meaningful self-reflection. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, wait. I pulled up the wrong one here on the screen. Yeah, here we go. Universally, the number one quality that all leaders share is that they don't ever listen to anyone else. They totally isolate themselves. And if anyone makes a suggestion in good faith, they rightfully view it as an attack. It's not about ego. It's just about realizing that no one else in the world can possibly offer useful information to someone who is ordained by God as the master of reality. Fuck. If someone tries to suggest something to them, they are a traitor. All the top leaders in history had one trait in common. They never listened to anyone else and lived entirely in their own head, believing that God was guiding them and therefore they could never make a mistake. This is all going to turn out really well because it is very adult behavior. Now, that is what Andrew Anglin said about Nick Fuentes directly today on his forum just a few minutes before it was sent to me as a result of his collab with Richard Spencer. I, Grugman says it's over. It's over between, I don't know. I, I again, I even said on Twitter, somebody's like, oh, they'll probably make up. And then I was like, oh yeah, they probably will. And I'm rereading this. I only read it that one time. I'm rereading this and I don't see how. Funny Valentine sent $3 damn Anglin really going scorched earth. Let's go. <laughs> Nick tried to kill, allegedly, baked Alaska for less. Not to mention Anglin is a rare genius according to Fuentes. True. He still think that? Probably not. Jaden and Nick definitely gay. First up right on that. Press O if you think it's over between the two. Who wrote this righty tighty said? Andrew Anglin. And it's funny because a groper got into my replies and said, did you write this? <laughs> I was like, no? Question mark, no? <laughs> no, I didn't. I wrote it and sent it to Anglin for him to post it himself. First off, Anglin doesn't need anybody to write for him. He's one of the best writers around. Are you fucking kidding me? Literally, on the whole entire internet. <laughs> what, I'm going to fucking ghostwrite for Andrew Anglin? No. <laughs> Anything could be the other way around. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I've always been very high on his writing talent. I've never said anything otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was me. That was all me. <laughs> that was a very good compliment, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.